Hello friends and welcome back. Uh, today is going to begin day nine. What makes God smile? Um, this is going to be an important purpose to learn um, because we definitely want to please God. And it, we're going to learn here how to do it and what directions we need to follow when doing it. So we're going to start with um, what is pleasing to God. Um, the most important task is to discover how to do that. The Bible says figure out what will please Christ and then do it. Fortunately, the Bible gives us a clear example of a life that gave pleasure to God. The man's name was Noah. Now, Noah, the reason why God said that he gave him life or gave him pleasure through his life was the way that he lived his life. So when God gave him a direction like go in the ark, it took him 120 years to complete that ark. There's probably plenty of discouraging days that he had where he could have said, no, I'm not going to do this. This isn't for me. But instead of doing that, he didn't question what he was doing. He just did it. And he did it to the specifications that God gave him to do it. So the reason why God was so pleased with him is because he looked throughout the world and man was only worried about pleasing themselves and not about pleasing God. Where Noah was different. So when it came time for God to send the waters and, 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 and create the destruction, he did that all but for Noah's family. Because Noah seeked him daily to have a relationship with him. Let's look a little bit more about Noah's life. God said, this guy brings me pleasure. He makes me smile. I'll start over with his family because Noah brought pleasure to God. You are, you and I are alive today. From the life we learn, the five acts of worship that make God smile. God smiles when we love him supremely. Noah loved God more than anything else in the world. Even when no one else did, the Bible tells us that for his entire life, Noah consistently followed God's will and enjoyed a close relationship with him. This is what God wants most from you, a relationship. So how would your life be different if you had a relationship with God like Noah did? Let's find out some things that, that Noah did and uh, in his relationship with God. The Creator wants, you, wants fellowship with us. God made you to love you, and He longs for your love, to, for you to love Him back. He says, I don't want your sacrifices, I want your love. I don't want your offerings, I want you to know me. Can you sense God's passion for you in this verse? God deeply loves you and desires your love in return. He longs for you to know him and spend time with him. Jesus called it the greatest commandment. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. So what, what, did, what did Noah do during his life that showed that he loved him supremely? Well, he trusted him completely. By faith, Noah built a ship in the middle of dry land. He was warned about something he couldn't see. He acted on what he was told. As a result, Noah became intimate with God. So, trusting God completely means having faith that he knows what is best for your life. You expect him to keep his promise, help you with problems, and do the impossible when necessary. The Bible says he takes pleasure in those that honor him and those who trust in his consistent love. So how do you think that Noah did that? 
He trusted in his consistent love. Well, first thing he trusted in was Noah had never seen rain. Because prior to the flood, God irrigated the earth from the, from the ground up. Second, Noah lived hundreds of miles from the nearest ocean. So if he lived hundreds of miles from the nearest ocean, did he know a lot about building a ship? No. He could have thought, okay, now you gave me directions on how to build a ship, but how are you going to get it to water? There, what about rounding up all the animals and caring for them? Noah could have made plenty of complaints, plenty of excuses, excuses, but he trusted God completely and made God smile by his obedience, by his obedience. So, in order to trust him, it takes obedience. I'm sure that there's times where we may not have had the faith to act obedient. We may have been at times where we feel like we may have been able to pick and choose what to be obedient to. Or maybe we said, well, let me just think about that. Well, what is prolonged acceptance is but disobedience. To be obedient is to do it without question. That's what Noah did. Trusting God completely means having faith that he knows what is best for your life. You expect him to keep his promises, help you with problems, and do the impossible when necessary. The Bible says he takes pleasure in those that honor him and those who trust in his constant love. Is there areas of your life that you need to trust God? Do you think trusting God is an act of worship? It is. Remember I told you yesterday that worship goes way, way past just raising your hands during the 30 minutes of church? It says here that just as parents are pleased when children trust their love and wisdom, your faith makes God happy. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So, so far we learned that God smiles when we love Him supremely. When we trust Him. And the next one is when we obey Him. These are some things that Make God smile. God smiles when we obey Him wholeheartedly. And Noah did exactly everything that God had commanded him to do. You know, there's times that we feel that God owes us an explanation or a reason for what he asks you to do. But understanding can wait. But obedience can. We need to be obedient first. Instant obedience will teach us more about God than a lifetime of Bible discussions. And why do you think that is? Well, obedience unlocks understanding. I'll repeat that. Obedience unlocks understanding. Now, don't confuse that 
with we need to understand before we obey. That's, that's not what it means. In fact, you may never understand some of the commands until you obey them first. Then it unlocks understanding. Often we try to offer God partial obedience. We want to pick and choose the commandments we obey. We make a list of the commandments we like and obey those while ignoring the ones we think are unreasonable, difficult, expensive, or unpopular. I attend church, but I won't tithe. I read my Bible, but I won't forgive the person who hurt me. Yet, partial obedience is disobedience. We can't pick and choose. If you choose to be obedient, you must be obedient in it all. Obey him gladly. This is the attitude of David. Just tell me what you what to do and I will do it, Lord. And as long as I live, I'll live wholeheartedly obey. James speaking to the Christians said, we please God by what we do and not only by what we believe. God's word is clear that you cannot earn your salvation. It only comes by grace, not your effort. But as a child of God, you can bring pleasure to your heavenly Father through obedience. There's that word again. Any act of obedience is also an act of worship. Why is obedience so pleasing to God? Because it proves you really love him. If you love me, you obey my commandments. Okay? God smiles when we praise him and thank him continually. Few things feel better than receiving heartfelt praise and appreciation from someone else. Your father loves it too. He smiles when we express our adoration and gratitude to him. Noah's life brought pleasure to God because he lived with a heart of praise and thanksgiving. Noah's first act after, uh, after surviving the flood was to express his thanks to God by offering a sacrifice. The Bible says Noah built an altar to the Lord and sacrificed burnt offerings on it. Because of Jesus' sacrifice, we don't have to offer, offer animal sacrifices as Noah did. Instead, we're told to offer God the sacrifice of praise and the sacrifice of thanksgiving. We praise God for who he is, and we thank God for what he has done. David said, I will praise God's name in song and glorify him with thanksgiving. This will please the Lord. An amazing thing happens when we offer praise and thanksgiving to God. We are, we, when we give God enjoyment, our own hearts are filled with joy. Have you ever experienced that? Have you experienced that joy before? It's a wonderful feeling. It is, how can I explain this? That joy is, it feels like you can feel God's approval on you, that you are pleasing to him, that you made him happy, and that he is smiling down on you. And how many of you have ever received someone that came back and, and, and gave you a good report? Maybe a recommendation. Maybe it was something as far as someone calling in and, 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 and talking to your boss and saying, hey, you know what? This person went above and beyond. They did such a great job. Someone that had given thanks for what you did for them. Feels good, right? How much greater do you think it would feel if it came from God? The creator of all, your heavenly father, is smiling at you. You feel instant enjoyment. This isn't something that Oh, I have to wait for him to 
go ahead and, and talk to somebody else and then that person will give me a word from God and that person will come up to me and say, hey, job well done. That's not how it works. It's instant. It's instant. When you obey and you do exactly what he asks you to do, when he asks you to do it, and have that childlike faith to just do it. Often as parents, we were raising our children, there was times where I'm sure we just have told them that they don't need an explanation for what you've asked them to do, to just go ahead and do it. So when we look at our kids and we ask that, do you think your Heavenly Father doesn't want the same thing? Doesn't want you just to have childlike faith? He does. But when we give God enjoyment, our own hearts are filled with joy. You know, I'm sure that when you had your kids and they were growing up and I remember I used to see Kayla falling asleep on the couch or something like that. She wanted to stay up and watch that movie, but she couldn't. And you look over and she's still sitting in the same position, but Completely asleep. And you just... Your heart melted. Or maybe you got home late and you would used to tell your son or daughter, you know, good night and or maybe read them a book. Or maybe there's some different activities that you would would do before you tucked them into bed. Maybe pray with them. It kind of ended your day and reminded you that no matter what happened that day, it didn't matter. Because at that moment, at that time, you're reminded of how much you love them. Well, God wants the same thing with you. God smiles at you. Worship works both ways too. We enjoy what God has done for us and we express that enjoyment to God. It brings Him joy but it also increases our joy. The book of Psalms says, the righteous are glad and rejoice in his presence. They are happy and shout for joy. God also smiles when we use our abilities. After the flood, God gave Noah these simple instructions. Be fruitful, increase in number, and fill the earth. Everything that lives and moves will be food for you, just as I gave you the green plants I now give you everything. The Bible tells us the steps of the godly are directed by the Lord. He delights in every detail of their lives. Every human activity except sin can be done by for God and pleasure if you do it with an attitude of praise. You can, wash your, you can wash dishes, repair a machine, sell a product, write a computer program, grow a crop, or raise a family for the glory of God. Like a proud parent, God especially enjoys watching you use your talents and abilities he had given you. God intentionally gifted us differently for his enjoyment. He has made some to be athletic and some to be analytical. He may be gifted at mechanics or mathematics or music or a thousand other skills, all of those abilities can bring a smile to God's face. The Bible says he has shaped each person in turn. Now he watches everything we do. 
You don't bring glory to, or pleasure to God by hiding your abilities or by trying to be someone else. You bring him enjoyment by being you. Anytime you reject any part of yourself, you're rejecting God's wisdom and sovereignty in creating you. God says, you have no right to argue with your creator. You are merely a clay pot being shaped by a potter. The clay doesn't ask, why did you make me this way? Hmm. It's kind of a powerful sentence there. God says, you have no right to argue with your creator. You are merely a clay pot shaped by a potter. The clay doesn't ask, why did you make me this way? So I guess we could also say that when we come to him with our insecurities, maybe we don't like the hair color. Maybe we don't like a feature on our body. Maybe we don't like some of the abilities that we want to have better. So by doing that, being disobedient, we're telling the Creator that He made us wrong. God doesn't make mistakes. He made you perfect. He called you his masterpiece. God wouldn't call you a masterpiece if you weren't. So I want you to say that. I want you to put your hand on your heart and say, I am a masterpiece. I am wonderfully and beautifully made. There was a time when well, I'd say right around teenage years that my daughter just wasn't really happy with her appearance. And she would constantly be looking in the mirror and constantly asking us how she, how she looked and she just wasn't happy. So I decided to step in and make a change. And what I did was I got these little postcards and I wrote on there, you are wonderfully and beautifully made. You are perfect. You are a masterpiece. And what I did was I went over by her mirror where she sat there and I stapled them into the wall so they couldn't be removed. That every time that she would go to that mirror that she would be forced to read, I am beautiful. I am a masterpiece. I am wonderfully made. Because what we confess out of our mouth shows the condition of our hearts. So I wanted her to confess what we were seeing, what God was saying to her, I don't make mistakes. I made you perfect. I gave you the talents you need. I gave you the abilities you need. And I want to see you using those abilities. And when you use those abilities that God gave you, you bring glory to him. You make him smile. Use your abilities. Use it for God's purpose. Bring glory to him. The Bible said God generously gives us everything for our enjoyment. <laughs> God even enjoys watching you sleep. He actually also watches <laughs> sorry I'm, I'm just I'm just reading this section and just I'm, I'm, I'm 
I'm just remembering some things, but every act of enjoyment becomes an act of worship when you thank God for it. Every act of enjoyment becomes an act of worship when you thank God for it. Have you thanked God recently for how he made you? How he made you perfect? How he gave you your abilities? Parents don't want to require their children to be perfect or even mature in order to enjoy them. They enjoy them at every stage of their development. In the same way, God doesn't wait for you to reach maturity before he starts loving you. He loves and enjoys you at every stage of your spiritual development. You may have had unpleasable teachers or parents as you were growing up. Please don't assume God feels the same way about you. He knows you're incapable of being perfect or sinless. The Bible says he certainly knows what we are made of. He bears in mind that we are dust. God looks at the attitude of your heart. Is pleasing him your deepest desire? Is pleasing him your deepest desire? This was Paul's life goal. More than anything else, however, we want to please him, whether it is in our home, here, or there. When you live in light of eternity, your focus changes from how much pleasure am I getting out of life to how much pleasure is God getting out of my life. That's an important, important distinction. When you live in light of eternity, your focus changes from how much pleasure am I getting out of life to how much pleasure is God getting out of my life. God is looking for people like Noah in the 21st century, people willing to live for the pleasure of God. The Bible says the Lord looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if there are any who are wise who want to please God. Will you make pleasing God the goal of your life? There's nothing that God won't do for the person totally absorbed with his goal. Since God knows what is best, in what areas of my life do I need to trust him most? I've asked myself that question and I know the answer to it. It's a hard one for me to say, but I need to trust him most in my finances. Because for me, it's, it's very difficult to not know what's coming. Um, years ago, we, we went through a bankruptcy and it was very humbling. It was very humbling. There were some things that I never thought I would have to give up. I never had a vehicle rep a possession in my life. When the time came, I had literally bought a brand new truck six months before I lost my job. I had credit card bills, had debt, and no job. And it was a feeling I'll never forget. And that feeling caused me to take the stance of I'll never put myself in that position again I'll control it 
I'll never be in a position where I will ever be that vulnerable again. So I decided to micromanage my life. And I remember reading a book and it was telling me um, that most marriages argue about money. And my wife will tell you she never worries about it. And it's a gift. It is a gift because I can tell you I have tried and tried and tried and tried and tried and tried. But I always found myself worried a lot. A lot. To the point that I don't know if you've ever gotten so nauseous that it's a, like a night sickness where you just can't can't throw up but you can't really do anything else and I would just be so worried And we would pray. We would pray. And I would ask her, how are you just so calm and not worried about any of this? And she would say to me, has God ever let you down? No. He never has. I think that's one thing that I really love about my wife. It's her ability just to love. Wholeheartedly. Teach me a lot too. So, I answer the question, what is your answer? What is the one thing? And dig down deep. Don't be embarrassed. You know, often, <laughs> when I when I hear God just tell me what to say and I have to pause for a second because I, I think God I don't want to tell him that he promised me for a reason and I need to be obedient to it so Learn, grow, build your relationship stronger. Love God with all your heart. Because He loves you with all His. Father God, we just come to you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, praise you, praise you, praise you. You have created us beautiful and wonderfully made, Lord. We are your masterpiece, Lord. Lord, we thank you for our abilities, Lord. We thank you that our lives are pleasing to you, Lord. We thank you that we're able to put a smile on your face, Lord, by being obedient to you, Lord. Lord, we come to you with childlike faith, Lord. Just worshiping you and praising you, Lord, in everything that we do. We thank you for the jobs that we have. We thank you for the people that you put in our lives. We thank you for the strangers that we meet, Lord. We thank you for the ability 
to have your words flow through us, Lord. We thank you that we get to be used for your purpose, Lord. Lord, we thank you for our abilities that you have given us, Lord. Lord, if there's anyone here that is unaware of their abilities, Lord, that you speak to them now, Lord. You speak to them, Lord. Lord, if there's any words you want me to say, Lord, Fill my mouth with your words, Lord. Let your words flow out of me, Lord. Let your presence flow through me, Lord. Lord, thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. You're such a good father to us, Lord. You're amazing to us, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you. Praise you, Lord. I'm so grateful for the Lord that we get to have a personal relationship with you, Lord. So, Lord, speak to us more than you've ever spoken to us before. Fill our hearts with your joy, Lord. Smile down upon your children, Lord. Lord, we want to be pleasing to you, Lord. Remove our selfish desires, Lord. Remove our unwillingness, Lord. Lord, cast it out of us. Change our character, Lord. Refine us, Lord. Create us in your image, Lord. Build us up. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Lord, we love you. We love you, Lord. We love you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Praise you, praise you, praise you. Praise you, Lord. Jesus name. Amen. Well, friends, I don't know if you can feel the presence. But God is here. God is here. And he loves you. He loves you so much. So if there's anything that I can pray for you with, please leave a comment. I'd love to pray with you. And we will start day 10, right? Yes. Day 10 tomorrow. So, thank you. Um, love you. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye-bye.